Hello and welcome to the 21st episode of Fresh Off The Real. My name is Lib. My name is Vengeance. I think I used that one before, but we're doing it again. Yeah, you, you, you sh- it, it was supposed to be Batman this time. Was it? I forgot the bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to redo it? No. I'll or... be Batman for when we do the Batman, see? Where it's all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're... Finishing off the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy with The Dark Knight Rises. This is a really long movie. It's very long. It's very long. I think a lot of its runtime isn't super justified. We'll talk about it. But I definitely don't think it's as tight as The Dark Knight with its runtime. Yeah. Just just to clarify for if you if this is the first of the three trilogies, three three bleh, of the three episodes in the trilogy. I haven't seen these movies. The first time I watched it was yesterday. And I, I, w- I watched it with a friend. We both really liked it. Really good. Yep, I think this movie is good. Um, we'll get that out of the way now. Uh, in my opinion, it is the weakest of the three. But that's not to say it's bad. Uh, I think this trilogy is pretty damn great overall. And I think this is a good finale to this trilogy. I just think it does some things a little worse than the other two. And uh, the runtime thing that I mentioned earlier doesn't help. For me, personally, I think it's the second best. I think Batman Begins is the weakest of the trilogy. That's fair. Yeah, but that, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's just good. I really liked it. Yeah, I also agree that the runtime was not justified very much. <laughs> Altogether, I gave it four stars. I gave it three and a half stars. Nice. Which is still pretty good. Still a lot. I would still I would still recommend this movie, of course. I would. I would recommend this movie and this trilogy. Yeah, this trilogy. Yeah, this is we I finally have the whole picture of the entire trilogy. And you know what? Very good. Like this this is this is top tier comic book movies. Yep, I agree. This is this is the best of the best. This is the trilogy that all comic book movies try to beat. Like this is this is it. That's the line. Okay, the Dark Knight. That's the line. You have to try to beat that, but you can't. You I have. Can't. A, I have. A, I have a take, but I have to wait till later to talk about it. <laughs> oh, sorry. The Batman is the line. You you have to beat that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For for uh, for context for those watching, uh, as a, as at the time of recording, the Batman is out. Uh, I have seen it. Lib hasn't. Yep. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much today. If you want to hear our full thoughts on the Batman from the both of us. Uh, it's gonna be an episode in a couple weeks, so uh, come on back for that, for the the end of pseudo bat month with pseudo- a three week break in between. <laughs> pseudo bat month, I think it will only be a one week break, right? Uh, I think it's two. Two shit. Well, <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It'll it'll be it'll be two. Yeah, because we're gonna we're planning to watch it next Friday, which means you won't be recording it the Friday. Well, yeah. it's like it, it won't be out for a couple weeks. Yes, yeah, pseudo bat month. With a little break. With a little, with a little speedy break that we'll talk about in, a, in at the end of the episode. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's talk cinema. So let's uh, read out this plot synopsis here. Here we go. This is from Letterboxd. The legend ends. By the way, this came out in 2012, same year as Avengers. Following the death of District Attorney Harvey Dent. Batman assumes responsibility for Den's crimes to protect the late attorney's reputation and is subsequently hunted by the Gotham City Police Department. Eight years later, Batman encounters the mysterious Selina Kyle and the villainous Bane, a new terrorist leader who overwhelms Gotham's finest. The Dark Knight resurfaces to protect a city that has branded him an enemy. You know, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much what happens. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much uh, almost exactly what happens. It leaves out the twist, which makes sense because twists are supposed to surprise the audience. But at the same time, it's a twist I don't enjoy, so I'm okay with it not being re- mentioned at all. <laughs> kind of wish the movie didn't mention it either. If I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah, the movie <laughs> didn't need it. Like, but we'll get yeah. into it. We'll get into it uh, when we reach there. So we're gonna do something like what we did with the Dark Knight episode because there's a lot to unpack. Because it, it's ve- it's very tight, not as tight as the Dark Knight. Again, the runtime. I guess we could talk about the runtime now. Yeah, it, it's two and a half. It's two hours forty five. Two forty. Yeah, two hours forty five. 
So it's it's fifteen minutes longer than the Dark Knight. Yeah, uh, and I and I don't think it uses that time uh, super well. Um, I think for the most part, everything with Talia can be cut, <laughs> and that'll reduce the movie by a good twenty minutes. <laughs> um, I think I think Bane on his own with with Catwoman as like a side piece was fine. I think he was a good villain. I I don't think Talia was needed as a this big twist villain. So that stuff could be cut, and I would not lose sleep over it, basically. It's not as tight overall. I feel like there's, there's some moments that are a little slow, kind of bring the, the pacing down to a halt. Other things that I just don't find as enjoyable to watch as I do with, like, The Dark Knight and Batman Begins. But that's that's me. I, I understand it's a personal thing. But yeah, it, it's it's long, so if you want to watch this, which I still do fully recommend, I just be prepared to sit there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but if it helps, it's still shorter than The Batman. <laughs> the Batman is longer, but I have I had you know what the Batman uses its runtime really well, and that's the last time I'll reference the Batman today. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> is it is this longer than No Way Home? I think no, I think No Way Home's still longer. Like I'll check while you talk. Yeah, check check while I talk. But yeah, this this is a uh... it's short. It's longer than No Way Home. It's, it's lo- longer than No Way Home. It, it, this is longer than No Way Home. Okay, never mind yeah. what I just said. But <laughs> this movie doesn't it has a it has a lot of filler like i i think i agree with pat that uh everything with talia miranda tate whatever the fuck you want to call her could just be cut out there's there's some scenes with bane i I mean i mean there's not enough scenes with bane is what i was trying to say i i think he's like like he's the main villain here he's the main villain in this in this movie is he though because he's kind of He's kind of reduced to a pawn, right? Like, I don't know if he's the main villain here. I, I think by the end of the movie, you're, you're meant to believe or accept that Talia was the the ringleader the whole time. I guess. Because in the end, she he is her pawn. And like even though, like, Bane does do most of the heavy lifting throughout the whole movie, it's still Talia's plan. It's still Talia's orders. So is he the main villain? <laughs> Like, eh. Yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but yes, but no. But what I was trying to say was, every scene with Bane is a scene that has to have Bane in it. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, it's like it's part of the plot. There's there really isn't a lot of scenes that characterize Bane, and there there are some that do when Bruce is in the pit or whatever. Wait, but uh, uh, but the twist at the end reveals that we weren't even talking about Bane the whole time. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Bane's character like subtext is is like we 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 see him do a lot, and you're 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 led to be intimidated by him, and that's fine. You know, like show don't tell, and, and trust me, Bane does show a lot. He's very imposing as a villain. Yeah, but as a character, a lot of the reasons the story gives you to care about him are told to you through other people, and not like. Us watching him directly, and yet, like Lib did say, like there, there's that twist where, like, when Bruce is in the cave, there's this legend of this child who like escaped the pit and was like the super child, basically. And you're le- you're led to believe that was Bane, but it's in fact Talia, and that's fine, like whatever. Like I'm not I'm not gonna lose sleep over that, but I do kind of wish we got to see more of Bane, just like be a character and not him pushing the plot forward, because literally every scene he's in aside from his introduction, is important to the narrative. It is pushing the story forward. It's not really a character-defining scene. Yeah. Um, I wish we got to see more of him just be himself instead of doing evil things, like, for the story to put, you know. Yeah. Like, we, we, we get downtime with Miranda Tate. We get downtime with Bruce. We get downtime with Catwoman. Bane is really constantly, like, pushing, pushing, pushing. And I, I kind of wanted some more... It's ironic we complained about runtime... But I wish we had more scenes of him <laughs> just being just being a character. But I think he he comes off as more of a a tool, especially with the twist at the end. He's more of a tool to push the narrative forward than he is a character. Even the Joker had some downtime in the last movie, j- just to like figure out his just for the audience to figure out his character. We don't get a lot of Bane. Also, like. I don't know. I don't know anything. Like this is outside the movie. I don't know what Bane is. Like I don't know his character. I don't know his shtick. Yeah. So uh, so that's another thing. I, I yeah. I don't feel like I understood his shtick after watching this movie. Yeah. So here's the thing about Bane in this movie is aside from him being super intelligent, this isn't really an adaptation of Bane. Uh. Um, Bane in the comics, like, like like Venom, isn't the thing in in this movie. 
Like, like it's it's he really is just a League of Assassins dude in this movie. What do you mean Venom? So in the comics, Venom ha- Venom is like this drug that he takes that like buffs him up and makes him super strong. Oh, okay. In this movie, he's just already super strong. Yeah, he's just super strong. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's just super strong. Like, like ba- Bane, Bane was existed that was created in the comics to to like kill the bats basically. So like like we're gonna make this person who was also trained by the League of Assassins. But it's just stronger, smarter, better in every way than Batman to, to to break him. Literally break him. And that's where, like, in this scene, the scene where Bane breaks his back, that's adapted from the comic Bane as his Judas him. That's pretty cool. And, 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 like, I love Bane in the comics. He's cool. I just kind of wish we got more comic book bullshit. Because I, I know why Venom isn't in the movie. It's because these movies are supposed to be a more realistic take on the Batman mythos. And this super drug with no side effects at all, basically. Um, <laughs> does it really make sense? <laughs> it's not realistic for this to just exist. Aside from he has like a drug problem in the comic, besides the point. In this movie, he really is just a, a really, really smart League of Assassins dude. So I think maybe giving us more time to look into his head and learn about him as a character would have done good doubly because... He's not really adopting Bane. He's his own version of Bane, you know. Right, right. And I, I guess, I guess, like something about that can also be said about Catwoman, because again, I don't know a lot about Catwoman, but I, I do know that she has some kind of powers in in the in the comics, right? Uh, no, no, she doesn't. No, no, that was a thing introduced in the Halle Berry movie, actually. The Halle Berry, oh yeah, that movie. The Halle Berry Calvin movie. She had cat powers because a cat, a cat puked in her mouth, <laughs> and then she got cat powers. The one with the basketball scene. <laughs> yes, the one with the basketball scene. <laughs> Sexy basketball. Yes, um, but yeah, in the comics, she she doesn't. She's just really athletic, and she has really good reflexes. Okay, she's basically a spy. She's just a spy. She's a like, like in terms in of her, her repertoire. Yeah, she's a bit of a techie. She's a bit of a techie. She needs. She needs the uh, what the fuck is it called? What's the, the that's the main plot device for her? Is uh, the, the, yeah, she's, this... she's trying to get this the software that's gonna basically completely erase her, uh, er- erase her from the like off the grid completely. The fresh start. That's, that's, that's what it's called. The fresh, yeah, start. the fresh start. Yeah, that's her. That's her. That's her goal in this movie. Yeah. Uh, so she just like she could just go back to stealing, but with a fresh start. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of weird. She's she's got this impulsive disorder to just steal. <laughs> well, she's a, she's a she's a cat burglar, if you will. <laughs> if you will, her 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 vision goggles make her ears. Yep, that's pretty cool. I liked that part. Uh, but yeah, back back to Bane. The only really character development that we get is that uh, he's he he's in love with uh with the. the Raza Ghoul's daughter. Which is weird because he's like double her age, right? Yeah, also kind of a father figure. So like yeah. that's super weird. <laughs> but that's all we get pretty much. Like she he he helped her escape from the pit and that's it. No, like he has a plan. Like he's not just a like he has a plan and he's really intimidating and he and like he, he goes through with it. We see a lot of him in action. It was just and like and that's not to say every character needs to be like a sympathetic villain. But we don't really get a look into Bane as a character, and I think, especially coming off Heath, Le- Heath Ledger's Joker, that would have been nice, you know. And I, he does. This is this is a personal thing, but he he does not have the voice I thought he would have. <laughs> you don't like? Uh, actually, you know, you know what's funny is is Bane. Bane. I, I talked about Venom, and Tom Hardy is playing Bane, and Tom Hardy is Venom. Oh my! Wait, seriously? He's gonna be Bane? <laughs> No, he is Bane. It's Tom oh, Hardy. Oh, Bane, Bane is in the Batman? No, no, in... in oh, wait, this is Tom Hardy? Rises. This is Tom Hardy? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> oh my god, it is! <laughs> it's Tom Hardy. This is Tom Hardy. What the fuck? Yeah. It's like, it's a fun little little gag. Like, a, not, not intentional. Why did why did I not look at the cast list? We didn't really, really read the cast list this time. But yeah, Tom Hardy is is Bane. Yeah, Tom Tom Hardy is Bane. What the fuck? And he does, and he does the voice too. He he does the Bane voice, like the one where he's wearing the mask. You know. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. Anyways, uh, about about the cast. So 
this goes without saying, but Christian Bale returns, of course, as Bruce Wayne Batman, and his voice. <laughs> it's it's I, I we we've been alluding to it since the beginning that the bat voice it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> this is the most chain smoker he gets. Right? He sounds like, like a chain is, smoker. Like part of me wishes he just didn't do a voice. Yeah, honestly. Like, like it's you know, <laughs> especially like given that Bruce Wayne kind of doesn't. Like Bruce Wayne has been secluded for, for like seven years, I think it is, or three years. Yeah, what is, and I don't remember. it's eight, eight years, and the uh, eight years, eight years, and like, like ha- half of Gotham is already suspicious about him. Yeah, they just don't do the voice. I just like you know, you know, <laughs> do something different. I like Robert Pattinson's Batman voice because it's just a speaking voice, but like deeper. You know, the the bat voice kind of gets grating here. Although I guess you don't really hear much of it in this one, <laughs> but when you do, it's annoying. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 a lot like it's a lot like Batman Begins, where for most of the movie he's just Bruce Wayne. Yeah, we we see we see him as Batman for a lot of the movie, uh, but but for 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 most of it, it's it's just Bruce Wayne. Like a, he he spends like an hour of the movie in that pit. Yeah, he spends an hour of the movie in that pit, and when we're first like the movie starts up. You're at, you're at the your time skip, and Bruce Wayne has been like secluded for those whole eight years. He's got a limp and a cane. Now. So you know he has a limp. He's very scrawny now. He's not Batman material. So you, you spend that first like thirty ish minutes with with like hobo Batman is what I'm gonna call him. <laughs> and then he's in the pit for like an hour. So that's like um, that's over half the movie. He he does suit up for a little while. Like he goes to fight Bane at the beginning, and he suits up for that. Obviously, he comes out like the Dark Knight rises at the beginning. Before he falls again, you don't really get to see him in the suit that much in this one, especially compared to the other two. Speaking of uh, comparing to the other two, this movie is very strongly connected to Batman Begins. This one is a lot more closely tied to Begins than it is to uh, the, the Dark, Dark Knight. Knight, because Bane's main his main motivation is he's trying to basically finish what Ra's al Ghul started. Yeah, they destroy Gotham. Uh, Bruce got in the way, so we're gonna we're gonna kill Bruce too. Yeah, pretty much. Basically. And that also has to do with, like, Talia. Talia wants to, to kill Bruce as well for killing her father, kinda. We didn't outright say it, but... Yeah, Tal- Talia's Ra's al Ghul's daughter. Yeah, Talia al Ghul. We, we didn't get say her full name. Yeah. She's the heir to the demon. Uh, her whole shtick is she wants to take over Wayne Enterprises by basically seducing Bruce Wayne. <laughs> into, into giving her the keys to his company... And then get the the um, plot device, the nuclear, the plot device, <laughs> nuclear bomb that Wayne Enterprises was making for some reason. <laughs> no, it, it was it was a it was supposed to be a free energy reactor to power the city with free clean energy, but but turns out it's a bomb. <laughs> yeah, it was modded into a bomb by by the, the League of Shadows. Very easily modded into a bomb. Almost like it might have been intentionally created as a bomb. <laughs> so yeah, knows? yeah, Lucius Fox, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah, Talia wants to get the bomb to blow up Gotham as like a contingency plan if Bane couldn't do it himself. Which uh, Batman does stop him, so there's that. <laughs> she was right to have a backup plan. Yeah, and I'm re- we're going to talk about that ending at later because I have opinions. I also have opinions, but uh, yeah, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, I, I like... I so like Talia has a role here. So like I'm not, we're not gonna pretend like because like, we both don't like this plot twist that that Miranda Tate ends up being Talia Al Ghul and she's the ringleader and, and getting revenge for her father. Yeah, we're we're both in agreement that we don't like that twist. But that's not to say that she doesn't serve a purpose. I just think instead of it being her, Bane should have just been the one to do that himself. I think I think she could have been she could have still been evil, but Bane could have been Al Ghul's child and and like talia could have well and then she wouldn't be talia she would just be miranda tate the miranda tate could just like have been i don't know corrupted by by bane not even not even that like i I think bane just could have it could have been bane's plan like bane Bane was trained by the league of shadows maybe maybe that maybe that's how they could have bullshit venom being in the movie maybe they could have changed what the properties of venom is and then it's like oh i'm gonna give venom to miranda now she now she kn- she has answered everything I say. Maybe I don't know. I I just feel like instead of introducing Talia, they could have just given Bane that role, and like it was his idea to get revenge for for Roz because you know 
he was the heir to the demon until the bat came along, until Bruce came along. It was supposed to be Bane. So Bane has a reason to be upset, right? He has a reason to want to go through with re- with finishing what Ross started. So like, I, I don't think he needed to twist into being a pawn for Talia at the end. Talia doesn't really need to be here. And if you wanted, if you wanted to give like the the Bruce Wayne life some conflict, they could have gone about it a different way than than using Martha Tate. I don't know. I just I don't know. I just, she doesn't really vibe with me. I didn't like her at the time. I didn't, I didn't like her here. Like I didn't like her now. She kind of feels like she's wasted. Yeah, I do feel like she's wasted. By the way, uh, we we didn't mention the actress's name is uh, Marion Cotillard. Cot Cot Cot. I can't say names. She's in Inception, and I, I've I've noticed this with uh, not just The Dark Knight Rises, but with all Christopher Nolan's films. He really likes using the same cast. <laughs> like, he 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 likes getting like one new cast member, and then it's like, okay, you're in my next three movies. Like they're good actors. They are. No, no, no. There, uh, there isn't. There isn't a single like all. I think every performance in this movie is is top notch. Yeah, I know. I love Anne Hathaway as um as Catwoman. Catwoman. Christian Bale is so great in this movie. I think he does hobo hobo Bruce really well too. You know, he really sells you on that. Michael Caine is always best Alfred. You know. Oh, oh. Speaking speaking of how how was uh, Andy Serakis as Alfred? How was he? I didn't ask. I will talk later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, was he good or bad? He was good. He was good. Okay, good. <laughs> he was good. Yeah, yeah. He just, he's, a, he's a different Alfred. He's, he's very different. Ah, he's a younger Alfred. He's, no, but like his, his, his like purpose is also very different. Oh, okay, okay. If you want to hear more about that, the Batman in a couple couple episodes. A couple episodes. Uh, speaking of Alfred, he gets a lot of character development in this movie. We, we get to see what his aspirations are if he, if like Bruce ever fires him or if if he retires and it's it's uh it's 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 really sweet those like scenes where it's just like what when when bruce was uh in hiding in batman begins when he was at the league of shadows thing every year he would just go on vacation to italy and he would expect to see bruce there with somebody foreshadowing the ending it's a really cute scene like because at the end of the day like like alfred is with bruce like like for, like in his crusade, like on his crusade as Batman, like he he's all he's all for it, right? Like he he he's okay with Bruce doing this for, to an extent. But at the end of the day, Alfred is is basically his dad, and and he just wants his son to to grow old and happy, you know. Like a, a, as much as Alfred is for Batman's crusade and, and you know, his his search for justice, he doesn't want Bruce to die out there, you know. And he'd rather like let the city go to shit and just Bruce just be happy for once, you know, than for Bruce to die in an alley somewhere like his parents. Yeah. And like you really do you really do get that sense that like Alfred would like and, and it's in all three of these movies that Alfred really cares for Bruce about like a son. But I think this one more than the other two, um, they really make you feel for Alfred. Like there's there's a scene where where Bruce fires Alfred emotional it's actually really emotional yeah a very it's a it's a super emotional scene because they uh, alfred starts fucking crying and i've never seen michael kane act that good like that 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 was he should have got an oscar for that scene (laughs) it's it's a great scene it's a great scene for them too like um i really love alfred's it's not really an arc but alfred's like deal in this movie i think it's a good bookend to know where he started versus where he ended yeah it's it's just it's really sweet and and um there's a reason i consider michael kane to be the best alfred still consider him to be the best alfred um it's 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 because of scenes like that where like are we in every interpretation you know alfred cares for bruce it's never a question that alfred doesn't care for bruce but i think in this one and maybe it's because michael kane is a lot older than um Christian Bale, I like, and the character is also a lot older. You get to really feel that um, that father just loving his son from Michael Caine, whereas like uh, Andy Serkis serves a very different purpose as Alfred to Robert Pattinson's Bruce. You still get that father son relationship, but it's different there. It's a different kind of father son relationship. It's a different dynamic between Butler and and Master. This one is just Alfred cares for his son and wants his son to be happy, uh, more than anything else. Yeah, really. It's it's he's it's, it's cute. 
He's a great. He's a great Alfred. I I enjoyed seeing him in this in, for all three of these movies, and I, I just love Michael Caine. The same. He's 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 such a sweet man. Uh, speaking of speaking of like talking about the 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 movies that came before. Uh, I just want to quickly mention the soundtrack because I felt the the soundtrack of this movie was very reminiscent of uh, of Danny Elfman's from the from the uh, eighty nine Batman movie. Did did you notice? I, like that the, they don't have the same songs. That's not what I mean. It just sounds very similar. The vibe is very similar. The vibe the vibe is very. I I feel like I feel like that was intentional. Yeah, I I think the the OST for for this trilogy is it's something we didn't touch on in the other two episodes that i'm thinking about it yeah let me see who composed oh oh this it's a uh, hans zimmer of course yeah, yeah it's hans zimmer or something the goat hans zimmer i think is, is like uh, like i said like i said in, in the oscars episode the three best composers of this generation hans zimmer danny elfman uh, uh, uh forgot is the star the star wars one <laughs> i can't say i can't think of it right now john williams there it I is. I was going to say it. I want you to get there yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the three best composers of this generation: John Williams, Hans Zimmer, Danny Elfman. You can't go wrong. I, 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 for the longest time, was of the opinion that the Hans Zimmer Batman theme was the best live action that Batman team we'd ever get. It may or may not have been dethroned by another movie. <laughs> who did the, Who did the score for the Batman? Michael Gia, no way home, dude. <laughs> Michael Giacchino, or that's probably pronounced wrong. Michael, the same composer, the same composer who did the the MCU Spider Man movies. Yeah, he did. Oh, he did Coco also, and Ratatouille. This guy gets it. This guy gets it. Oh, he did Rogue One. Hey, <laughs> the, the Batman soundtrack is smaller. A, a certain theme is reused a lot. But it's a fucking excellent theme. <laughs> so it's fine. But anyway, <laughs> enough me gushing about the Batman because I got to do that for next time. Yeah, yeah, we got to save it. We got to save it. <laughs> yeah, we got to save it. Yeah, the soundtrack in, in, the, in this trilogy is great. The same goes for this one. I, I think Hans Zimmer does a fantastic job with uh, the music of this movie. This, this I think uh, out of all of the movies, this one really, like, the, the music kind of stood out, kind of. Yeah, I think... Uh, not just music, but the whole shot of like when Bruce climbs out of the hole, and then he, and he's walking into like the into the the light, yeah, and uh, and it play it plays the Dark Knight Rises theme, and and the, like you get this huge landscape shot with Bruce like just walking. It, it's such a beautiful shot. The the track they use is amazing. Even like the track that's playing while he's climbing the the wall, like the successful attempt when he's climbing the out of the hole, is really good. Yeah, it's it's it's. The soundtrack was really good. Like we didn't mention in the other two, but like the soundtrack in the Dark Knight was also really good. The theme from the Dark Knight is very good. Yep. So let's let's continue on with the cast here because Gary Oldman, of, of of course, again returns as uh, Jim Gordon. Gary Oldman's back. Gary Oldman is fantastic. He is Commissioner Gordon in this one. He is Gordon. Like when I when I picture Commissioner Gordon in my head, um, with any adaptation, uh, Gary Oldman is who I picture. He's great. He's great here. I think he does a really good job at selling you on um because like Gordon's whole story in this between these two movies is you know he was hiding he was keeping the lie that Dent was a hero you know and and you kind of get the sense that he was uh, like it's it's aged him it's been really it's he's tired you know he's a lot more he's a lot more over it and he he wants to stop this lie and he wants to be the the cop the the commissioner that he knows he can be like with like with a clean chest you know gordon gets uh he 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 sits he sits in the back seat for most of this movie because uh he gets shot and he spends like the entire movie pretty much in the hospital except for the last like 30 minutes so we don't we don't see him a lot like he he, he was in the spotlight in the last movie so it makes sense that you know we're not focusing on him much but he he still gets a lot of a lot of characters still comes out uh, from him. Yeah, I like his arc here. Like he's like Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon's always the the Boy Scout. Like he's like the good cop, right? In every Batman story, like we all know that Gotham's police force is corrupt, and that's no different than this trilogy. And and Gordon is always portrayed as like the good one. He's the only good one. So you could you could really see that like he kind of doesn't believe that in himself anymore because he's keeping this lie 
because he he spent eight years, well, not eight full years chasing Batman, but he did spend that time before Batman completely disappeared, like hunting, hunting him based on a lie. So like he, he feels like he's not being the cop he should be. He's not being the, the protector Bruce thinks he is, and it, and like it it wears him down, and it's it's really interesting to see, only for him to come back in the end when the Dark Knight rises, haha. <laughs> And and he and he he becomes that that like lethal that police that good cop again you know yeah I'd say I was gonna say lethal protector that's that's not right that's, that's not right. <laughs> lethal protector that's venom <laughs> <laughs> uh so we 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 were introduced to a since Gordon took a, a step back in the story we were introduced to a new cop character yeah because Batman always needs one <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, who played Blake in the movie, so John John Blake, I think. John Blake is his name, or uh, his legal name, Robin. It's Robin. Uh, Robin Blake. It's Robin. Robin. <laughs> Can we just get that out? Of, get this out of the way now. This twist is. I don't like it. Not, not really a twist. It's an Easter. It's not. Egg. It's, it's not a twist. It's 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 an, it's Easter, an Easter egg. egg. It's an Easter egg. I don't. I don't like it. I think it's cringe. Like it. <laughs> Like, like, I, I, I don't think it needed to be here. I liked it. I, I, I got. I, 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 I like, I like the scene where he like finds the bat cave, and it's implied that he picks up the mantle, right? Like, I'm okay with that. But I don't think that he needed to be named Robin. Like, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I, I, I like the subtle hinting towards it uh, throughout the whole movie because Bat, Batman kind of like, cause he, he, he goes in the bat, the big fucking thing. It's, they yeah, call it's it the just, bat. It's called the bat. It's just called the bat. Yeah. <laughs> he goes in the bat with Bruce, uh, and then Bruce tells him twice about like he he asks Bruce why he wore a mask, and he's, he's something like he's like it's not to protect myself, it's protect the people I care about. And then Bruce tells him the same thing during the climax. A lot of the movie, he's like begged to be the the good cop, like. Like, uh, like he was saying with, like Pat was saying with Gordon. So, you know, like the new generation, like the, the next Gordon. Yeah. But is he the next Gordon or is he the next, He's the next Batman? Batman. Oh, we don't know because there will never be a follow up. I, I feel like if they wanted to do an Easter egg to, to the comics and, and this is coming from someone who desperately wants Robin to be in, in these movies again, because we haven't had a Robin in a movie since like Batman and Robin, you know, so it's been a long time. And I, and I do hope, assuming Robert Pattinson gets multiple movies, which he probably will, um, we do get a Robin eventually. But I didn't think the way they handled Robin here was was good. I don't know. I think if they named him like Terry or something, I think that would have been. I I was gonna say uh, instead of his legal name being Robin, his legal name should have just been Dick. Yeah, like what if it's like it's Officer Grayson. Yeah. And then like, oh, I, I know who that is. And then you find out his name at the end. Oh, it's Richard Grayson. My friends call me Dick. I, that's, that's Nightwing. I know who that is. <laughs> like, you know, that's uh, Nightwing. I, I feel like naming him Robin is just like, it's just an Easter egg for the sake of having an Easter egg instead of just like, let's make this guy Tim Drake. Or maybe this guy's Tim Drake's brother or something. I don't know. Or it's Dick Grayson, or it's Jason Todd. I don't. Know, or or they or they or they make like a a mixture of of the names and make up a fake one, you know? Yeah, exactly. But just naming him Robin, just like okay, oh, well, his middle name is Robin, but whatever. I don't know. His his first name is Robin. His middle name is John. He's like, try. Uh, my name's uh, John Blake. Oh, try my legal name. And then the girl's like, it's a nice name, Robin. It's cute. But that's the only mention of it. It is cute. I just I wish I wish it didn't. I <laughs> wish it was something else. <laughs> like if you were gonna go for that Easter egg, they should have like just went all the way with it and just make this dude Dick Grayson, or 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 or, or not or making that completely like different like Batman. Like oh, this guy's name is Terry because in Batman Beyond, Terry is Bruce's clone son who becomes brought Batman. You know I don't know whatever. It's, it's just me <laughs> complaining for nothing. It doesn't matter. Like it's it's a two second thing. It doesn't it do, really matter. It doesn't matter. Ma it's literally an Easter egg. It has the, it, it happens in the last five minutes. It's, it's yeah, not even... yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's not worth complaining about. But I, I wish it was something else. But I I'll be honest. I did like because I didn't know about that. And when I was watching with my friend, uh, she didn't know about it either. So we kind of just like I, I, the whole time, 
I was I was joking th- through the whole time we were watching the movie. I was joking that he was Robin. Like I was making jokes, and I I I, I didn't know about this twist. And then when when the when the reveal came up, I was like, "Oh fuck, I was right." <laughs> I was right. Vindication. <laughs> Vindication. <laughs> oh yeah, it's 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 it was a it was a cool reveal for me. It was a cool reveal. I liked it. Like, aside from dumb Easter eggs that bother me more than they should, I thought that Justin Gordon Levitt was good as John Blake. I think he's the weakest of the main cast. Like, of the main cast, I think he's the weakest performance, but overall, I like him. I like his inclusion. Um, I think he's I think he's a, a, a fun, like, sense of levity. Because the, the Bruce in this movie is, like, the, the darkest, the, like, the most moody. He's fed up, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's done. Like, he, 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 he is broken physically and emotionally and mentally. So I, and, and, like, Gordon isn't around much because he, he's written out pretty early. So I think uh, having John Blake... As a just sign of like levity is is nice. I think he adds a good like dynamic to this main cast. But uh, yeah, I just think the Robin name is dumb. <laughs> yeah, I liked I liked uh, I liked his performance. He was good. Like yeah, he's 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 a good character. I I liked I liked every time he was on screen. You know, he he was cool. Uh, but so in the last two episodes, uh, we kept we, when we were talking about Rachel. We kept being like, oh, it's okay that Rachel sucks because Batman gets a better love interest later. Let's talk about her. So Anne Hathaway plays Catwoman. And I love her. Yeah, she's 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 great. She's, great. she's so good. I'm, I'm, I, I, I truly have, I'm of the opinion that Catwoman is the best love interest for, for Bruce in, in anything. I think I think she's just really, really, has a really good dynamic with him. Is she she's pretty like she's a lot in the same boat as him because he's not he's not leaning towards good he's not leaning towards evil he's in the middle. Catwoman's kind of the same thing where she's kind of just doing things for personal gain. I think that for a love interest to work for Bruce Wayne, it needs to work for Batman too. And Catwoman is the only one that really fits that rule well. Talia Al Ghul is another one from the comics, and she's kind of a love interest here before the twist. But I always, I I always thought Catwoman just worked better. I think Talia was just trying to seduce him to get to the she job. She was, yes, and that's that's the way it is in the comics, but too. But like Bruce does care for her in the comics, at least. It's just she's she's kind of a, a stinky person, <laughs> like she is here. <laughs> and Anne Hathaway, and I think her performance here is fantastic. Uh, she's really good. She's really funny. Like she, I, none of these movies have a comedic effect but like the, if there was anything close enough to comedic effect it would be her i think there's like subtle jokes here i think this i think that the batman does a better job with like the subtle batman jokes but there are jokes in no this but movie. i mean i mean like you know how there's always that one character that's there for comedic effect the, these movies don't have oh that, yeah yeah know? yeah yeah she's very snarky she's very fun yeah she she's she's super she's super like uh what's the word she's super sassy she's always cracking uh sarcastic jokes uh, especially towards Bruce, it's implied that she. That, okay, look, look, a lot of this movie has characters that imply that they know that Bruce is Batman, but then later on we find out she didn't know, and I have I have no idea how the fuck. Like, come on, <laughs> how the fuck does anyone not know that Bruce is Batman? Especially in these movies, like how how does no one know? There's no way. That she didn't know, cause it, like Bruce just goes around wa- walking around town, just going like, "Oh yeah, I'm friends with the Batman, uh, and we talk very often." And he told me to give you this. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah. And oh, and also, uh, Batman uh, was uh, Batman was gone for eight years. Oh, Bruce Wayne was also secluded for eight years. Hmm, hmm. that's a coincidence. Uh, how about nobody questioned that ever? Like when um when Gordon finds out at the end, it's like how did you how did you not know? How did, how did you not figure like he's been Batman for a long time? How did you never figure this out? You're supposed to be a detective. When I watched the movie for the first time, the this one, I thought Gordon knew. Like I like it's it, he speaks to Bruce as if he knows. But then Bruce gives him this little like remark right before his sacrifice at the end, and then he's then, Commissioner Gordon just standing there like, wait, Bruce? 
Like, he's surprised. <laughs> like, it's kind of implied in the other movies that, like, he kind of knows, but he isn't sure. But then this one confirmed them that he doesn't, he never knew. He's surprised. The only person in this movie specifically who knew 100% was Blake. Yeah, it was Blake, yeah. <laughs> and what, and how did he find out? Like, <laughs> yeah, how did he find out, but like nobody else? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, I guess like that's just like the thing. It's like a comic book thing. Like, how does nobody know Peter Parker is Spider Man? Right. This like, is why. This is why superhero secret identities are stupid. I, I I finally understand Pat's point when he talked about that. Yeah, especially in movies. Like like the secret identity thing is dumb. <laughs> like okay, I, I know Pat complains about Far From Home again. I'll let it oh, go, no. Pat. Okay, but how did nobody figure out? Spider uh, Peter Parker was Spider Man in Far From Home on the bus scene. How? Because I don't know. Same uh, same thing with the uh, Infinity War. In Infinity War. Conveniently, everybody happened to look away and never noticed he was gone. Everybody. <laughs> no, it's bullet stupid. It's dumb anyway. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, let, let's continue. Who have we talked about? Who haven't we talked about yet? We we um that's like that's the main cast like Mor- like Morgan Freeman is back as Lucius Fox in this one and he's he's still great yeah he's great we all we all love Morgan Freeman uh someone who makes a a, re- a return that really didn't have to happen was Cillian Murphy comes back as a Scarecrow yeah, he's a good actor he's in like two scenes so it's not a huge loss he's just a judge and he's like exile or death and if you choose death you get death by exile. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like it's funny but but he, he, he it's weird that he's in all three of these movies as like basically as a joke character he's not even a serious threat in, in the other two yeah come on <laughs> the only the only time he was a serious threat was the middle part of the first movie that's it but i think he's he's a good scarecrow i don't mind him being here liam neeson has a cameo in flashbacks yeah he's got he has a uh Bruce has a vision while he's in the pit. Uh, oh, we didn't really talk about the pit. We let's talk about that. So, like, we we went through the cast. So, I want we I want to talk about three scenes specifically. I want to talk about three scenes. I want I want to talk about like all the stuff in the pit. I want to talk about the bullshit that happened with the reactor, and I want to talk about the ending, of course. So, let, let, we're we're gonna go yeah, through we, that. We, we, yeah, we didn't talk about that whole plot point at all with the pit. But what happens basically is um, once once uh, Bane comes to town, um, Bruce decides that he needs to to suit up again. Like, he, he's been reclused for too long. Bane is a big enough threat that the police can't handle, so he has to suit up one more time. But the problem is because he hasn't been training for eight years, his body is not in a a, a state for him to fight. So he uses like tech to reinforce his body at least temporarily to go fight Bane. But he uh, severely underestimates the sheer strength of this Tom Hardy bald man. <laughs> and and Bane completely destroys him. D- break, like, it recreates the scene from the comics where he literally holds him over his head and breaks his back on his knee. Bane completely overpowers Batman in every way, intelligence, strength. Bruce took the bait and lost. And thus, the Dark Knight falls into the pit where he is told to climb the pit, but nobody survives. Well, if you want your chance to save your city, uh, get out of this pit. Yeah, that, that's the the that's where like the whole like legend of the kid who escaped the pit that we were talking about earlier. Uh, that's where that comes from. Kid ended up being uh, he he thought it was Bane. Bruce thought it was Bane. Yeah, he thought it was Bane, and the audience has led to believe it's Bane, uh, but it's not. But it's Talia because I don't know. Also, fun fact about the about that the the kid. That the, the the kid actor that played young Talia, that's Joey King. That's the kissing booth. That's that's her right there. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm upset now. <laughs> it's Joey King. I, I'm no longer happy. You know, it's it's funny because this is a hundred percent Joey King's best performance in any movie. Which is it's a little, a little sad. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty sad because she doesn't have any lines. But anyways. The pit is like a prison. Like a bunch of people are, are, are like they 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 live in there, and like Bane was born there because he was born in the darkness, molded by it. Batman merely adopted the darkness. 
I that I love that line so much. The Bane voice doesn't do it for me, but that line is great. You think the darkness is your ally? <laughs> I actually I really like the the pit because like Bane just could have killed him, right? Yeah, but, but like but just killing people like killing Bruce is not fun. I want to give you the chance to get back up and try to stop me. You're gonna fail. Whoa, wasn't that a weird bug? We record on Discord, remember? Ugh. But I want you to try and suffer. <laughs> uh, yeah, B B Bane was pretty evil on that point. Uh, Bane's just pure evil. That that's another thing. Yeah, he, he, he yeah he's pure evil. He he really wanted to he wanted to break Bruce, throw him into a pit where he'll never escape, and then watch as his city dies. Literally puts puts the the city exploding on TV for Bruce to watch. <laughs> So th this is a uh, where Bruce's arc happens. It's 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 great. I love this arc because he has to for, for the past two movies. He's just not afraid of dying. It, like that that's that's part of his character. But here he has to like come to terms that he's gonna die one day, and he might die fighting Bane, and he might die in the pit. Like he can't. He, it's okay to be afraid of dying, but he has to be okay with it. Yeah, he can't just not be afraid of dying because that then he's he's. He's not living. And th there's this great there's this great analogy cuz like when when you try to when everyone else who's tried to get out of the pit uses a rope so that if they fall they get caught by the rope so they don't die. But that like sense of that that knowledge that even if you slip you'll survive, that's what stops people from getting out of the pit cuz they don't try their hardest, right? Because death is not on the line. Yeah. You, like you can't you have to control fear. You can't be ruled by it, and that's Bane's whole shtick. And that that was that was Bruce's problem is is he wasn't he wasn't scared, but because he had no fear, he was ruled by fear, and he needed he needed to be okay with it. Like yeah, I can die at any moment, and I, I have to put my all into this regardless. So we get that scene of him climbing out of the pit without the rope. The the best part about that scene for me, besides the soundtrack, which is booming in that point, in the first movie. Like it's established that Bruce is scared of bats, and this this whole scene about the pit, him trying to get up, like like Pat said, fear is the main element here. And then bats show up when he's trying to like climb, just like a nod that like this is one of his other fears that he has to conquer, right? But it's like flipped on its head because he has to get scared of dying. He's not scared of dying, but he has to become afraid of dying. Yeah, he has to become afraid of dying to overcome it. Yeah. Just like how he had to overcome his fear of bats to become Batman. <laughs> wow. Isn't, isn't it great when directors know th what their trilogy is trying to do, Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> Take a note from Nolan. <laughs> hmm, Nolan directed Star Wars movie. How would that go? Uh, anyways. <laughs> now I want that. <laughs> the, 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 the pit scene is such a great time yeah it's it's great we spend too long in there but it's great <laughs> and that's where you see the dark knight rise yeah because the, they chant they chant something in a different language that i don't know and the the thing they think they chant when people are trying to escape the pit they're chanting rise so he rises yeah they like the title yeah like you know how in batman begins he began and in the dark knight he was the dark knight but here he rose this movie's like like title like how like fitting the title into the story it really makes me wish the dark knight or the batman begins was called the dark knight begins instead yeah come <laughs> or like, on <laughs> or like something along the lines maybe they didn't think it was gonna get a sequel which would have been weird because it's batman i think the reason why was for general audiences i guess yeah, maybe it's like but what what sounds more appealing to people who have never seen a batman movie Batman Begins or The Dark Knight Begins, you know? Yeah, I guess that's fair. But it would have fit better in the in the trilogy. Yeah. Like, in hindsight, it would have fit better. Yeah. I think maybe, maybe in hindsight, Nolan would have changed the title. But uh, it's, I mean, it's called enough. The Dark Knight Trilogy. Like That's the yeah. most we're going to get out of it. All right, so the next thing, the main plot point is, like, the reactor we mentioned. That this bomb is going to go off and, and kill all of Gotham. But th this is when... Gordon's like escapes the hospital pretty much, uh, and and comes back into the picture. This is the climax of the film, and uh, let, let's uh, let's talk about that. Yeah. So at at this point, so what happens is Bane basically infiltrates Gotham, blows up 
a, a uh, football stadium, which, by the way, he blows up a football stadium, but he blows up all the bridges surrounding Gotham that gets like people in and out of the city. And he also he also blows up the the tunnel entrances, and he traps all the all the police in the tunnels. Now let's just say that is terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> like like that's like like just pure like evil. It's such a terrifying scene to watch. And, like, you, you really, like, sympathize with Bruce watching this happen while he's powerless to, like, do anything because he's crippled at that point. And he's in the pit. He's in the pit and crippled. So, like, it, it's such a good, like, establishing your villain scene. Because, like, the Joker did fucked up shit, right? Like, no one's disputing that. The Joker did fucked up shit and, and, and Roz was gonna do fucked up shit. But, like, Bane really, like, takes it up a notch. Bane he seals up the entire city so no one can leave or come in. And the only people that might even attempt to help the citizens, the police, are all of them are stuck underground. And on top of that, there's a bomb that is going to explode in three months or something like that. And and the only person who can disarm the bomb, Bane killed in front of the entire stadium. So the only other person who could possibly help them, this city doesn't even know is crippled like it's batman and the city the citizens aren't even aware that he's gone the citizens are trapped in there for three months and like you can see the the progression because it starts to snow and it looks really cool <laughs> it, it's such a like i think i think it's such a great like evil evil plan it is oh that that reminded me uh okay i need i need to talk about this because it, it kind of pissed me off a little bit a little bit okay so gotham right the city gotham Again, like like we keep saying that these three movies are a more realistic take on the Batman mythos. So Gotham kind of just looks like New York. But in this movie there's a lot of establishing shots where there's where there's like pan shots of Gotham and it's straight up New York. Like you could even see the Empire State Building, you could see Central Park. They didn't even try to hide that it's not New York. They're using pictures of New York. <laughs> You can even see the World Trade Center, Trump Tower. You can see Trump Tower. <laughs> it kind of sucks because uh, this is something I'll talk about more in the the Batman. Because I, for me, Gotham needs to be a character as much as anything else in these movies. Gotham needs to feel like Gotham, not just a backdrop for the action. And in this and this trilogy, and especially this one, because it's one of the only times we we see it during the day, like for a long period of time. Yeah, a lot of this movie happens during the day. Yeah. It, it really just, just feels like a generic city. It doesn't feel like Gotham. I f but I, f I feel like that's some Like, did, 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 did the Batman capture that or no? Cause, yeah, the Batman captured that perfectly. Because I feel like that's something for the longest time that they could only do in either animations or video games because you could build the city from scratch. Because in movies, it's super hard to make a fictional city that looks real, you know? I think 89 does it really well. But since then, they've kind of struggled to to make Gotham feel like Gotham. Because like Go Gotham looks like a really like it's hard to explain the vibe you get when you look at a picture of Gotham. Just look at what it looks like in the comics. The buildings have a very specific architecture. Like there's a lot of rounded corners and stuff. But in, in this movie, in this trilogy, they kind of just it's, it's just literally just New York City. Yeah, it, it looks like New York City, and it's just used as a backdrop for for action. Yeah, uh, but anyways, back back to uh, to the scene. <laughs> Where were we? Yeah, so they need to disarm this bomb, and they don't have Batman. What is going to happen? Well, this is where Robin comes in, right? And then we talked about this already, but he, he's pretty much the the hero of this part of the movie because Batman's not there. He kind of takes up the 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 mantle of like the city's protector while Batman is gone. He's the one, he, like, exchanges notes with the cops who are stuck on the ground. He'll, like, come bring them supplies and stuff. It's it's cool. Like, it's it's cool that he, he does this. And, like, Selena Kyle's kind of helping him, too. Yeah. And while, while Bruce is making his way back. And Gotham pretty much becomes an, 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 an anarchy. Like, Cillian Murphy, uh, Scarecrow, Scarecrow's, like, the judge. Uh, Bane just, like... Kills random people sometimes, just whenever he feels like it. Yeah, any anyone who like stands up to him, he kills. And all of this is happening at the same time where that we're seeing these pit scenes. So when Batman leaves the pit, 
comes back. First thing he does, I need to find Fox and I need my suit. Yeah, I need my shit. Like I need my sheet. I need my gizmos and gadgets. He gets his gizmos and gadgets, and now it's time for the ending. Okay? I don't like this ending. <laughs> uh, what don't you like about it? I think it's pretty good. You know, I, I, if they left out the scene afterwards where they reveal that Bruce is still alive, I would have loved the ending. He should have died at the I, end. I, think, okay, I, I don't think that he needed to die in the end. I think that if the shot was cut of just like Alfred like sitting down and he looks into the camera like he does in the movie, he looks in the camera, then it cut it pans to Bruce and, and Selena, right? I think it should have ended before it pans to Bruce and Selena. I think it should have just like he sits down, he orders his stuff, and he, like he Oh, that's such a Nolan thing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he just puts down his newspaper, he looks in the camera and like he kinda smirks. And that's how it should have ended. Because like when he smirks, you know. The audience knows. Yeah. You know, it's just like like he sees Bruce there. You they, they didn't need to show it to us. Yeah, because uh, br- th- what happens is Bruce pretty much like they can't disarm the bomb, so he grabs the bat, takes it to sea, explodes. Uh, and the whole the, in the whole movie, everyone's Chekhov's gunning this uh, this autopilot that they keep talking about on the on the bat that the autopilot doesn't work. The autopilot doesn't work. Then 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 turns out the autopilot does work, and Bruce knew the whole time. Bruce fixed it before that scene at some point. The scene of him like flying away, like like it, 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 like that shot of him flying towards the camera, was him leaving, while the bat was going a different direction with the bomb. Yep, basically. I I do like that ending. Um, I just wish we didn't see Bruce and Selena in the end. Yeah, that, that's been, that's like, the like, thing that ruins it for me. Yeah, like, like like you know what's going. You know you don't need to show it to us. Like they're not as nice, but they didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, they're not as nice, but not necessary. It's cute though. It is. It, it was. It's it's a good ending, and and you know what? It it wraps up the trilogy really well because now ev- everyone. Before Batman was just missing, but now everyone in Gotham Gotham thinks he's dead. So Bruce can pretty much just live a normal life. Yeah. Of course, we have no idea what happens afterwards because there was Nolan never followed up, and, and DC never followed up. So we don't we have no idea what happens. But I don't want to know. Like this is a great ending, it wraps it up perfectly. It's a good trilogy. It's a really good trilogy. It is. I really, really, really like it. I very much enjoyed talking about it. On the podcast. Nolan's a fantastic director. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this movie made him my favorite director. He's my favorite director now. <laughs> and, like, it was interesting for you because like I've seen these movies. I saw them when they came out. I, I saw them plenty of times. You know, but for you, it was the first time. Yeah, I, I really, I really, really enjoyed it. And before this, it, my only knowledge of Batman was video games and the, the 1989 movie. And that's now it. Now you have uh, you have the experience of what is considered one of the best superhero movies ever, and one of the best trilogies ever. This is yeah. Th- this is this is like the second best trilogy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Man, I can't wait for you to watch what I consider to be a better Batman movie, and and you to not share that same opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. Not a, not as a comic book fan though, as a Batman fan, because I now like Batman. A <laughs> here, here, here's the thing. I, I, I said this about. I said this off camera, so the audience gets to hear me sound pretentious as fuck. Oh my for, god! For a second, but the Batman isn't just a good superhero movie. It's not just a good Batman movie. The Batman is a phenomenal film, cinema, if you will. It is shot like a film, not like a comic book movie. The the performances are that of a film. It's so, it's just it's so good. I can't <laughs> talk about the Batman. I say as I'm drinking my water from my the Batman cup. Oh, you got the oh yeah. I bought the cup. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the cup. I want the cup. It's such a good movie, and this trilogy is fantastic. I I loved getting to revisit it. I'm happy you enjoyed it as much as as I do, because these movies are great. The trilogy as a, like j- just to wrap it all up, just to give you a recap, because I I rated Batman uh, Batman Begins. Three stars, I gave uh, Dark Knight four and a half, and I gave Dark Knight Rises four. I would give the entire trilogy a, like, a, I would give it a five out of five. Like, this is it's so good. One of the best trilogies I've ever seen. The second best trilogy I've ever seen. I will not say what the first, the, the first best trilogy I've ever seen is, because I want to save it for a podcast episode. Okay. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Sounds something interesting. We've talked about it before. <laughs> I mean, to probably have. I just don't remember. Oh, uh, but yeah, now it's time to move on to Hot Off the Presses, the segment where we talk about movie news, what happened in the week we were gone. Well, mostly Batman stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a pretty pretty quiet week. So uh, let's uh, let's kick it off. So DC League of Super Pets is a movie that's still happening. I'm sure you forgot about it already, but Keanu Reeves just got casted as Batman. Yep, cool. and uh, he sounds fine. We got a trailer with his voice. He, whatever. I'm not interested in watching this. Don't think I'm gonna watch it. You watched. You watched the Paw Patrol movie. True. <laughs> You're gonna watch this. <laughs> and John Kravinsky's in it, so maybe I will. Oh yeah. Wait, he's Superman, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> oh wait, wait. Is he just called Batman or is it Bat Dog? Like, <laughs> it's. I, it's it's bat dog or bat something bat pup dog man <laughs> i know in, i know in the trailer he says when i was a bat pup i was taken from my parents <laughs> uh, yeah and it's, it's, oh, it's taken stupid. from his parents we'll get the other batman and stuff out of the way because it ties into super pets yeah but yeah one of the batman is out it is out as of a couple days ago at the time of recording um it's fantastic please go see it it earned 21.6 million dollars on opening night <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Please go see it. That's a lot. <laughs> That's just in the U.S., by the way. Glo- globally, yeah, uh, we don't know yet. We will talk about it in a couple weeks. Yep. To tie up uh, the Batman news, since it was so good, the, if you remember, Robert Pattinson tweeted that if the Batman flops, he'll do porn. Sadly, the Batman didn't flop, so he's not doing porn. That would have been great, but hey. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. Next, we have a new Alien movie is in production. Ridley Scott is set to come back to produce it, but not direct it. It is being directed by Fed Feed Alvarez. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Uh, Fed Alvarez directed Don't Breathe. So if you know that, then yeah, I didn't watch it. I don't watch horror movies. Moving on. So ABC said that if the... So if you remember, the Oscars cut 12 categories and they're like announcing the winners the night before instead abc said if they didn't do that they would have just straight up canceled the oscars why that's interesting i i could not tell you why maybe the show they want the show to be shorter uh i don't know why i have never heard a single complaint that the oscars are too long <laughs> maybe the oscars like the ratings for the show have been going down honestly i have not looked at statistics so that could be why but uh, it's it's a really stupid decision. I think a lot of these uh, categories deserve proper attention. I think editing editing is one of them, and I think that's kind of important for movies. <laughs> yeah, but so. pre- yeah, pretty important. I think even costume design was cut out too. It's it's weird. It's I don't know why they're doing this. And actually, I saw in a discussing film on Twitter that Denis Villeneuve, director of Dune, made a statement about this, saying how it's very disgraceful to the people who made these movies. It's it, it's 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 a sad thing, and I hope it doesn't continue. Like this better not be. This better be the only time this happens. It won't. It it will. This is this is how it's gonna be now. That, or it, 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 you know how it's gonna be actually next year's Oscars is just gonna have less categories. Yeah, probably. Which is really sad. That's super sad. It is. Oh well. Moving on. Yeah. Next, uh, we have an I Am Legend sequel in the works. Will Smith is set to come back for this. I don't care. Yeah, with Michael B. Jordan. I'm not interested at all. I haven't seen the first movie. I Am Legend is fine. Um, don't really have a strong opinion of it. Moving on, so we now have a f- official art for Peter's new suit that we saw at the end of No Way Home. It looks real good. Yep, just like a comic suit come to life. It's fantastic. It, it looks great, and like the, the spider is like reminiscent of the old suit spider, so it looks good. I mean, like uh, uh, Tom's old suit. The mechanical one so like yeah it it, it 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 looks great can't wait to see it in a movie i hope this is his like permanent suit for the mcu yeah same i hope this just becomes his permanent suit uh disney plus is launching a cheaper version of their subscription that will play ads instead uh neat <laughs> i don't think this is necessary i think here in can i saw I, I didn't look up the pricing but i saw I, i've seen this at a, i i I heard through word of mouth that it was it's six ninety nine the one with ads. I don't know why anyone would get that, but hey. Yeah, I don't. I don't want ads in my streaming service. I would definitely don't want to pay 
for a service and get ads. So yeah, I think this is dumb. It's uh, it's yeah, it is dumb. <laughs> and uh, lastly, in 2019, there was a Minecraft movie that was announced, and they said it would come out March 4th. Uh, that was Friday. Where's where is it? <laughs> where, where did it go? They have not talked about this movie at all since 2019. It was just funny to mention. They There's nothing promised. to say. It's just funny. It's just funny. Yeah. Funnily enough, that's the day that they went to watch the Batman. <laughs> you know, instead of watching the Batman that night, we could have been watching Minecraft. Exactly. That's just that's just sad. Uh, but that's it for Hot Off the Press. It's a pretty slow week. Uh, but the Oscars are coming up, so we, we're 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 getting ready for those news. We're gonna have a lot more to talk about soon. Yeah, actually, Pat, I noticed that uh, you watched Nightmare Alley this week. I did. I did. Mm, can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, I'm not. I can wait. <laughs> so, time to move on to our last segment of the day, Backlogged. Last week, Alib recommended me a movie, and I watched it. That's how Backlogged works. I recommended you Murder on the Orient Express. So, Pat, why don't you tell us about it? Uh, it's a good thing you told me the cast, because there are two. There's an 87 version, I believe, and then the 2017 version. And if you didn't tell me the cast, I totally would have watched the old one. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I hear the old one is slightly better. Uh, I wouldn't know. I've, I, so I knew nothing about this movie at all. I just, I meant to watch it when it came out. And it was, it's been on my watch list for a long time. And uh, yes, yeah, so I finally sat down and watched it. It is a whodunit. It takes place on a train. Kenneth Bragan has a mustache I love and I want on my face. <laughs> it is top one movie mustaches, I think. For sure. This movie has a fantastic cast. We have Michelle Pfeiffer. We have Olivia Coleman. We got Judy Dench, William Dafoe, who I don't think spoke at all this entire movie. Uh, Daisy Ridley, Johnny Depp, who also dies. Penelope <laughs> Cruz. Uh, it's, it's a huge all-star cast. The cast is great. The performances are great. Uh, the story it was fine. <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah, I, so uh... the, the story is adapted from an Agatha Christie book uh, of the same name, Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, I think it's her best-selling book. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't read books. Maybe the book is better. Oh, for sure. Come on, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like the setup. I like the... As in, in, in whodunits, the question is obviously, oh, who's the killer? But this one's a little different. Spoilers for... Uh, yeah, this movie's spoiler alert. Uh, the question is, who are the killers? And the answer is, every fucking buddy. Yeah, literally, <laughs> literally everybody except Mr. Mustachio. Who was literally, who was on this train by accident. <laughs> yep. He just wanted to go on vacation and he got dropped in. If he wasn't here, everyone would have gotten away with it. Well, I mean, in the end, he does give them that opportunity. Yeah, he's... he's like, yeah, like, listen, like, shoot me. Like, I don't, I don't care. This is, this, this case has destroyed my views on justice. You all have made me a worse person and I hate you. Just kill me and get away with it because I can't lie. <laughs> But in the end, they don't kill him, and he does lie. Yep. Uh, it's, I think it's the ending that a lot of people don't like. It, 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 it's a very unsatisfying ending that, that everybody is the killer. It's cool the way it happens, because they explain how it happens. I don't mind that it's everybody is the killer. I think that's interesting for a whodunit. What I don't like is is his um, the, the main character's, like, like, how he goes about it in the end. You assholes. <laughs> yeah he's just like you guys are all terrible people there is no amount of justice that'll make me feel better uh, i hate you but you deserve a second chance i guess <laughs> uh, i understand where you're coming from kind of which i it was what i thought was kind of dumb but yeah and then very very obvious sequel bait at the end yeah the sequel uh being death on the nile which I didn't know was out until I looked it up last episode. Check out last episode to see my reaction for that. <laughs> it is out. I heard it's fine. I, I will watch it eventually. I heard it's worse than this, but hey. That's that's not good. I, ga I gave this movie four stars. I gave it three, I believe. Yeah, you did. But I, I really liked it. I, I, I really liked it. And the train, like the Orient Express... Might be my favorite setting from any movie. <laughs> well, it's it's a cool setting. I like the the setup. Like I like that it's not a big train. Like it only has four cars, 
and like every and each car has a lot of scenes in them like the 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 movie like cuts between all four cars very seamlessly yeah i think the the train is a good backdrop for for what's happening it's a it's a great like uh it would have been i think it would have the the movie would have been really cool if the train was moving the whole time and and uh Poirot had to figure out who it was within a time frame like like oh we have to th- that's still there like there's still a time frame like we have to figure out who did the murder before the cops show up so there's still that same kind of time frame but i think it just, it would have been cool if the train was moving you know be honestly beyond that i don't really have that much to say i thought it was fine for who done it everyone being the killer or like a group of people being the killer i think is interesting for the genre because it doesn't really happen much it's usually one villain or one killer that they they keep like twisting you know so i thought that was that was cool but i would much rather revisit knives out <laughs> than watch oh, this yeah again. I, don't, I don't think i would ever watch this again but it is good like i liked it but um now i have to recommend you a movie yeah you do this is the end of a trilogy right what we talked about today yeah I thought maybe I'm gonna recommend you the first movie of a trilogy that you haven't seen. Oh, okay. I have a couple. Let's do your watch list. And there was a there was a little, little movie that I, I wouldn't say I'm surprised you haven't seen, but I think you should watch it. Uh, it stars an actor we talked about today, uh, Keanu Reeves. Oh, uh, so I am recommending you uh, John Wick. Yeah, I've never seen John Wick. <laughs> you should watch John Wick. It's really good. Oh damn, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> I I love the first movie. I think it's great. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. You know, fun fact: there was one time like where Pat and I were just like, I feel like watching a movie, and then we were like, let's watch John Wick. And then we just didn't. And we didn't. Yeah, we just were talking about other things. <laughs> we just didn't watch it. <laughs> now now is that time. Now is that time. Hey, you know, last last episode, Dark Knight, we were talking about a, a scene with a pencil. This movie's got a scene with a pencil. There you go. I hope you're excited. I am. I am actually pretty excited. I, 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 I've been meaning to watch it. All right, there we go. So tune in next episode to hear me talk about John Wick, and also tune in next episode to hear us talk about a, a little, little blue blur. <laughs> so yeah, we, we were originally we planned to do uh, Sonic for the Dark Knight episode, but due to some scheduling and some shuffling around, Sonic was pushed back. So here it is. We're doing Sonic next. Yep, we're doing we're doing Sonic the Hedgehog in anticipation for the new film, which is in April, April fourteenth. I yep, want to say April, April something. And then after that, we'll be making one last trip to Gotham with for the Batman. Yep, April eighth. Idris Elba is Knuckles. <laughs> Can't wait to talk about that. But with that, that's gonna be the end of this episode. Thank you everybody so much for taking the time to listen. And if you want to check out our other stuff, you should go ahead and click on that link tree. If you're watching on YouTube, just scroll down to the description, click on that link tree, or just go to linktr.ee slash fresh underscore off underscore the underscore real. Yo, it's Lib from the future, here to tell you that you don't need the underscores in the link tree anymore. Now it's just linktree slash fresh off the reel linktr.ee slash fresh off the reel no caps no spaces no underscores we finally got it it took this long what episode is it 21 it took 21 episodes for us to get no underscores was it worth it yeah because underscores are annoying back to the outro and there you will find a form that you could fill out to recommend us a movie or tv show And we'll watch that, your recommendation. And we might even use it for an episode of the podcast. Keep them coming, guys. We love seeing what you guys want us to to review. Because we got some weird ones. And the weird ones are the good ones. (laughs) We got Barnyard. (laughs) We do have Barnyard on that list. We have Barnyard twice (laughs) on that list. Twice from the same person. You know who you are. You could also find our uh, letterbox accounts on that link tree. You'll get podcast spoilers because we log the movies pretty often. Keep up with what we're watching. Watch what we're watching. You might find your new favorite movie. And of course, all the social links are there too. It's a link tree after all. There's links on it. But with that being said, we're going to be seeing you guys in a theater near you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.